Hi guys, this is Wise Girl Ways and I just wanted to do a start video to say hi and to let you know about my channel that I'm trying to start up. Um, I'm going to talk about and you know show ways that um, people can cut down on their bills, save money, um, get out of debt, you know, just ways that um, I've learned over the years that you can do things in a little bit smarter way and still have uh, the nice things in life and good times and enjoyment without breaking the bank. So I'm gonna talk about that and show some things that I do. I'm also gonna do some videos on my new thing I started in the last three months, which is the dumpster diving. <laughs> Um, we have a house in Texas that we're in the middle of renovating. And we also have um, a corporate apartment, California, that we are currently in for my husband's work. We're out here for his job for a couple of years. We go back and forth, but right now, for the most part, we are working out here. And we live in an apartment complex and found out that they throw everything. So, by accident, we sort of discovered it, and I'll get into that at a later time. And um, so, yeah, we came here with very little furniture because we knew we weren't going to be here that long. We had lived here one time before, and we drug all of our big Texas furniture with us, and it was crazy. And we could never find a place to live that would accommodate it, and half the time it was all in storage, or most of it. So we said this go around, especially since now we had the farmhouse. Um, we would leave our furniture there, bring just clothes and essentials here, and pick up stuff, you know, use things. And then we left, we would just get rid of it and come home, and it's so much easier. So we have a 1920 farmhouse that we've been renovating, and it's about halfway done. And... Um, when we were doing that, my husband um, found out his job situation was changing and we were going to have to come back to California. <laughs> so we closed up the house. We have some friends watching it that have been amazing, helpful for us. We go back and forth when we can on Christmas and we went for 4th of July. We're probably going to go for Thanksgiving. But while we're here, I found out kind of by accident that... Um, yeah, there's a lot of people that come and go here, and when they leave, they just take all of their stuff and throw it in the trash. There's no donating. And the other thing that's really crazy that I found out about is that we have a compactor here. So if that stuff that they put out, say at 8 in the morning, is it still there at 10 o'clock, they're going to put it in the compactor and crunch it, which is horrible. So when I found this out, and I started seeing really nice stuff sitting next to the dumpster, like wicker table and chairs, and uh, mirrors, and just really nice chairs, tables, anything like that, I started grabbing it because I just didn't want it to go to the compactor and get crunched up. It just seemed very wasteful. And nine times out of ten, I take it to Goodwill. But, you know, there's a lot of times we first moved in, we had started buying just basic little things, you know, off a of let go and whatever, and then stumbled across all of this stuff these people were getting rid of when they were moving. So then it went from that to just kind of checking the bins during the day and the stuff I would find next to the bins on a weekly basis more than furnished our house. I mean, everything and anything you can think of, I have found out there and it's been mind-blowing it's been phones watches every kind of small appliance under the sun I have an air fryer now I have a brand new coffee maker that was in the box with the paperwork um, coffee tea tea kettle thing brand new um, rugs pots and pans that are like brand new tea fowl perfume, brand new bottles of perfume. I mean, just crazy. Would never in a million years think that people would throw this stuff away. Brand new rugs, um, brand new TVs, chairs. I mean, just any kind of kitchen items. 
I got Ben's galore every time I go out there. I found two Ben's two nights ago. I went out there to walk around to look at the moon, and I found two brand new Ben's with a sign that said free, so I brought those in. Um, vacuum cleaners, electric broom sweepers, um, earphones, clothes with the tags on them, Calvin Klein, Puma, um, brand new suits uh, on the hanger with the price tags on, just, just crazy, crazy. Um, jewelry boxes with jewelry full of jewelry and watches, five or six or more bottles of brand new bath, bed and beyond, body sprays. This is in an apartment complex. I'm not talking about retail, but apartment complex. So after this has been going on for a while, I've four or five pet carriers that I've sold, brand new, nice. Um, I started saying, well, I'm going to see if I can sell some of this stuff. So I started selling on um, Marketplace. I sell a lot of stuff there. Poshmark, Let Go. I'm going to start doing eBay. And um, as I was doing this, I started watching YouTube videos and seeing, well, gosh, this stuff, finding all this stuff in my apartments. I wonder what other people find. So I started just out of curiosity watching these videos, and that's when I came across a lot of people that are doing this and um, talking about why they do it and not people you would think, you know, it's not like everybody thinks. It's not the homeless, crazy people that do it. It's a lot of people that want to see this stuff not go to the dump. So much stuff. I had no idea. And then the food. Oh my God, the food that goes to waste. It's just crazy. But, um, so then I started venturing out, going to stores and trying to find groceries and stuff. And I found a little, but I haven't found a lot. They're very um, tough here around California. They have a lot of compactors. They lock a lot of stuff. So in my area, I haven't found much, but um, a little bit, a little bit I'm starting. I'm starting to force myself to go to more retail places and find stuff because I've been kind of spoiled just my little apartment area, just gathering up stuff. So I'm like a little squirrel. I've been gathering everything and hoarding it, and now I gotta start selling it. I have a lot of sweaters and winter stuff that I've been backing up that I need to sell. I have some stuff I plan on taking back to Texas for family and friends that I'm just hoarding. And um, so I'm gonna go over a lot of stuff that I find and what I found in the past and then how um, you know, from the time I was 19 till about the first 10 years of being an adult, I struggled a lot and things that I did to help myself overcome being homeless or living in a car, which I think is kind of crazy now. I think a lot of people just don't, um, they don't just, they don't see in front of them what they can do to help themselves. And, it's sad because there is a lot that people can do. I mean, there's a lot of homelessness here. It's really sad. And um, yeah, you gotta learn to do little things to boost yourself up. You know, I, I was very um, down and out for a little while once I left home and um, had some big obstacles I had to overcome. And, um, but I never, you know, I never wanted to live in my car, so I didn't. I mean, I've rented rooms people and that actually worked out really well and um, you know I've had all kinds of jobs and um, I've done a lot of things to cut corners and I would say to anybody that's trying to get out of debt one thing I would say is stop buying new if you're buying new anything <laughs> other than like you know bare and essentials stop doing it so um, that would be a big thing number one thing you don't need brand new clothes if you're trying to get out of debt and you're on a budget. You don't need brand new furniture and you don't need brand new anything. And um, the difference between new and used is unbelievable. Furniture is a huge markup. Clothes are a huge markup and you just don't need it. It's too easy to find things that um, will suit your need that are a lot cheaper than new. So that's my one tip for the day. If, if you're thinking I got to do something different, I got to make a change.
that's what you need to do, number one. And um, it's not that hard to find uh, really nice things. Um, the number one thing I used to do when I was younger and had no money, and I mean no money, is I went to garage sales because the thrift stores were too expensive for me. <laughs> I could buy a really nice dress for work or a pair of pants and a top for 50 cents. And if I went to um, Goodwill or one of these other places, it was six or seven dollars. And I was so tight at the time, I couldn't afford that. I couldn't afford the five or six dollars for a pair of pants. But 50 cents I could afford. <laughs> so that's what I did. I got up early in the morning. You do have to get up early in the morning on a Saturday. And if you're tight on gas, you have to look on, I used to look in the paper, but you could look online and find some places that are close by, um, and hopefully they are, and go over there and um, see what you can do. Now they have marketplace and things where it's actually easier. A lot of people put free stuff online, which um, I think makes it a lot easier this day and time than it was for me because I had to go find it where in my car where now you can sit online and find it. So, you know, there's people that are selling things for free or little to no money or like I put things up there for $5 for a suit, a nice suit and stuff. But if somebody was to write me and say, you know, I'd really like this suit, but I'm low on cash, would you take two or less? I'd probably say, come get it. Come get it. You know, but there's... um. There's a lot of things like that that you can do, um, but that would be the number one thing. Don't buy new anything. Oh, I got a job, I gotta have nice clothes. Look, I worked at law firms. I worked at doctor's offices. I worked at insurance companies where we had to dress really nice and I was still was able to. I bought some of the best stuff I ever had at garage sales. I bought Liz Claiborne, Tommy Hilfiger, um, Casual Corner, all that stuff. And I'll two dollars for a dress, fifty cents for a pair of pants, you know, um, nice stuff. And you don't have to spend um, even five or ten dollars if you just go to the garage sales. A lot of times you can go too. If you don't want to get up in the morning, you can't do it, or you have kids and little babies and whatever, and you just cannot get up at the crack of dawn at nine o'clock or eight o'clock and go on a Saturday. Um, you can go by later on, 2 o'clock when they're closing, and see what they have left. And I've had people give me, like one time I went to a garage sale and I was very um, down on money. And this lady was packing up, and I said to her, what are you going to do with all this stuff? She said, oh, we're going to donate it. And I said, well, would you mind if I take the bags for you, and maybe I can go through and see what's in there, because I could use some stuff. And I'll take it to the donation for you. And she said, okay. So she gave me all the bags of clothes. There was like 10 bags of clothes. And I loaded them in my car. And I took them home, which I wouldn't even recommend doing right now. I would Today I wouldn't take them all the way home. Today I would pull in a parking lot somewhere or a park. And I would go through them and I would take what I want, put it aside, put the other stuff in the bag and go take it to a donation box. Which again, we didn't have 20 years ago. So we had to take them too. Goodwill or whatever, but now it's so easy to just drop it at any donation box around town usually. So that's something you can do too, because there's a lot of people on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon that are done and they don't want it. And the other thing they'll do is they'll give it to you and you can try to sell it yourself on Marketplace. Maybe they had pots and pans that were dirty but look good and you can take them home and wash them and scrub them and sell them after you clean them. Or I have found stuff here, um, so a wicker table that was really cute, but it was faded. And I went to the 99 cent store, which I love, and they actually have furniture pens there that you can color in, which I've done all of my tables in my house that I've gotten for little or nothing. Um, because they were all scratched, but they're cherry wood, but they all had nicks and scratches and cuts So the people didn't want them and they were giving them away So I brought them home and I touched them up and you can't even see them and they look great And I'll show you those one time in the future, but anyway, I found the wicker table and I brought it in here and it was very faded looking The sun had really it was not pretty. It kind of had a 
yellowy green color too. It was horrible. And I remembered I had these pens that I had used on my tables that I found. Some of these tables I found on the side of the road. Some they gave them away for free. And I ran down and got them. I got a coffee table for 15 bucks. It's probably a $50, $60 table at least. And I had to color the hell out of it because every corner was scratched. But now it's fine. Just a little time and effort. So um, I took the wicker table and I took my pens and I started coloring. It looked better. Well, then I had to do the whole table. But I did. I sat here and I kind of just colored it in and all the way around and made it look much nicer. These were pens I got three for a dollar at the dollar store and had already done two tables with them. Got my money's worth. So <laughs> colored this table really well and just brought the wicker back to life a lot. Put it online and sold it for $20. So this is what I'm saying. If you have a little bit of time and effort, you either have one or two things in life. This is what I used, this is what used to get me by. You either have time, which is equivalent to money, or you have money. They're both very valuable. So if you don't have money right now, you probably have time on your hands, which you can convert to money if you use your brain and you're a little wise about it. So um, that's what you do. You use your time wisely and you convert your time into money. So don't ever feel like because you don't have a job or the right job or all the money in the world that you can't do with something because you have time. If you have time and effort and you're not willing to work or you don't mind going out of the box a little bit, and that's the other thing. People don't want to do anything out of the ordinary. They don't even want to sew a button on anymore. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. I can't tell you how many shirts and clothes and beautiful things I've bought in, at a garage sale or even at a resale shop for nothing because it was missing a button. A button. Or it had a little cut in it or a little rip. I have Nike tennis shoes on right now. I'll show you. I forgot about that. 